Hey guys, it's Lee from Andertons here and uh, it's my absolute pleasure today to come up and uh, see my friend Bernie Marsden here. Um, Hello. And uh, Bernie, very, very kindly, um, has agreed to sort of spend a little bit of time showing us some of the guitars that he owns and talking a little bit about uh, the PRS SE guitar that um, PRS make for him. And just generally talk about life as a, as a gigging guitar player and, uh, you know, and stuff. So, so we're in Bernie's house, so thank you very much for inviting us. It's a pleasure to, you're very welcome, it's a pleasure to have you here. If there is anybody out there that's sort of thinking, uh, Bernie Mars and not familiar. Let, what give us the potted? Anybody history. under twenty is quite <laughs> happily to say that. Right? Well, I turned pro in '72, really, with a band called UFO, which was a well kept secret for a long time. Um, it was a great learning curve, and I look back on it now, a with a lot of fondness, and uh, b with a lot of uh, a certain amount of guilt for the way it all finished and stuff, because. You know, without that break as a pro, yeah, uh, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you today. Uh, you know, so Wild Turkey after that with some really good guys. I found my way in Wild Turkey because I was in a band how I thought being pro should be, yeah, i.e. having a good time and enjoying yourself as opposed to dreading the next gig. You know, uh, sounds terrible, doesn't it? Fabulous name yeah. for a band. Wild Turkey. Wild Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I went to my first break with. Uh, you know, a big name was Cozy Powell, the late Cozy Powell, who uh, kind of headhunted me from Wild Turkey for his new band. And the next thing I knew, I was on top of the pops and I was being revered as a pop star, which which I never was and thankfully never wanted to be. Uh, but we were on TV a lot and we had hit records and I got a big taste of uh, what that was all about. Uh, oddly enough, I hadn't recorded very much. I didn't record with UFO, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that came out. I didn't record apart from the BBC stuff with Wild Turkey. And with Cozy, we only did a few sessions, and I did more sessions for other people on Rack Records than uh, than I did of my own stuff. Uh, until I joined Babe Ruth, uh, after the Cozy Powell thing, and um, that was the first time I went in the studio. But I look back on that now, and that's really good, because I'd learned a hell of a lot in that two mm. years or whatever, two or three years, before I'd have made some really dumb stuff some of my contemporaries have now wished they hadn't made records you know when they were 17 and 18 i won't name names but there's quite a few so oh god i wish i'd never been <laughs> recorded you know. but it's all part of your career and then i guess uh, the the pace ashton lord thing with working with the guys from purple was yeah. my big big break yeah. and uh into white snake and uh maybe people under 20 will know about white snake because it's still fairly current it's yeah. in all the movies and on tv so yeah there's a lot more but we don't have time to go into no that. so You've you've become for me one of these kind of guitar players that I remember there was a there was a, a, a gig that you had to do local to Anderton's and uh, you turned up and there was no backline and you phoned me up and it was like you know can I whiz over and borrow something and I I just remember at that time being mm -hmm. obsessed with amplifiers that had channel switching and built in this and you had pedals and all this kind of stuff. And you looked around and you just pointed at some old Marshall thing <laughs> that was covered in dust because we hadn't sold it for about five years or something. And you went, that'll do. That, that'll do. Yeah. And I just went, we better make sure it works. And we, we plugged it in and you with no pedals just plugged the guitar straight into it. And you got a tone. You just got like a fantastic tone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, for me, that's always been your... You yeah, know, you've I, got it in the fingers. I, in I spades, think, I think. You know, say, you know, my sort of my, my generation and the people like you know Jeff Whitehorn and you know uh, Mick Moody and people like that. We all come from that period, really, when the only pedal you could, you had really mm. was a a, a fuzz box, mm. which I never really liked. You know, I mean, Jeff Beck had done it everything with a fuzz box, really, and I could never get the same. It just did sound like a bee kept in a small jar. Yeah, or that you know, then the classic crybaby wah wah thing came up and yeah. so we had to get the tone from the amps you know yeah. but really the tone is really coming from you and the guitar yeah. and whatever you plug into you should still try and maintain your own uh, your own input really yeah. but having said that the technology today is is fantastic and i know that you can cut a, a lot of corners and get that sound but i still 
I'm not, I'm st still old school, I guess, when I still like to plug in just yeah. and, and play. Nice guitar, good amp. Good amp and get yeah, the guns. Amp, but yeah. So you must be a joy for tour managers. What, what's your yeah, ride? I think I am, just like yeah. Any decent valve uh, amp? Yeah, go. A, a Marshall or a valve amp or something yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. What it actually says on the contract. Really? Something similar. <laughs> yeah. Now, as I mentioned before, we're in Bernie's house and uh, the lovely Mrs. Marsden is uh, making cups of tea and coffee and cracking us pieces of cake and stuff. So if you can hear stuff in the background, that's what it is. Um, he, but, he's eating the cake, not me. I'm not. Yeah, it's very nice. As you cake. can see. Um, so we're talking about guitars and I thought a nice way of doing this. I mean, you are in guitar circles uh, well known for having a proper collection of guitars. Mm. Um, and there's quite a bit has been written about that and, and we've been lucky enough today that you've, you've bought a few with you. Uh, so, kid in a candy shop is an understatement. Um, <laughs> so I thought it'd be nice, what's your earliest sort of recollection of your, you know, what was your first sort of like proper guitar that you, you sort of think, oh. The first proper guitar I had was a, was a Hofner Colorama. Right. But I did buy it from Selmers. Yeah, yeah, I and, remember. And uh, that was a dream you know, because I jumped in, off the in, bus when uh, I was like, in Soho, Charing Cross Road, Charing Cross Road, Road yeah. yeah. I'd been on a bus on a journey through London as a kid, about <laughs> 14, and it stopped opposite the 24 bus. It stopped opposite the uh, Selma shop. And all I'd ever seen was Fender and Gibson guitars in mm -hmm. magazines, really, or on the telly. Yeah. And there they were in the window. So I jumped off the bus at age 14 and stayed in Selma's for about three hours and caused pandemonium back where I was supposed to be staying. You know, I was only 13 or 14. So that was my first proper guitar, was it was a Colorama. A friend of mine still has it. Oh, wow. I don't think I could offer him anything enough because he keeps it. He hangs, he's a successful uh, builder and uh, big, big time. And he, it hangs in his dining room wall, apparently. And he says, you, you haven't got enough money to buy this back. You know, just, just nice. I mean, it's all painted in uh, psychedelia, like oh. like Eric's SG at the time. So uh, That's wonderful. I, but that I, got me through. And then I, from there, I went on to and I bought my first strap. So you were a strap player, were you? I first? was, yeah. I was a strap player for a long most time. Most people would think of you as as a as a firm know, sort of you know single I know. cut. I bought the uh, I got the strap uh, from a guy, but before that I'd had a Grimshaw Les Paul copy, right? Because mainly Peter Green played a Les Paul, but I couldn't you know you couldn't yeah. you couldn't really find a Les Paul then. Yeah. they were around obviously, but they were probably more money than I, I had to spend. Although. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember buying the uh, Grimshaw, which was new. Mm -hmm. uh, but next to it was uh, there was a red three three five hanging on the wall, which was I think ten quid cheaper. Right. And Jim Marshall sold me that guitar. Oh, brilliant! Little, yeah. So we're talking, yeah, back it's, in the day. Yeah, back in the sixties. Yeah. yeah, he actually sold it to me and said, you should, uh, "That's the one you want." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." That was it. So from there, then after once after that, I got the Strat, and then I swapped the Strat. Uh, for an SG, and uh, that's the SG that I still have, which uh, we'll get out in a bit. Oh, that's that's yeah. one of the ones. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to I want to talk about the guitar that uh, you, you're certainly probably most famous for owning, whether whether or not it's. I mean, it, it's the one everybody talks about when they talk about <laughs> the Mars, Beast. Yeah. Which is the beast. So, so now we're lucky enough. Um, yeah, I'm I should, good. I should, I should get it. So, this is in a. This is in a very pretty case. You were telling me that a, a local curtain maker had uh, done all yeah, of the, uh, yeah, the embroidery, embroidery around yeah. the edge of your case. Yeah, it was fraying a bit, and uh, so I, I took it in and. Uh, Got some. She got this old um, yeah, curtain material you know, around it. Got, got some people on on here that yeah. you know you've probably never heard of. You know, BB yeah. King, yeah. Uh, Government Mule. You know, that's so. quite recent. That one, yeah. <laughs> I think Warren must have put that on. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So anyway, I'm here's a first. I am almost shaking. You know, just <laughs> uh, not just because about how many fabulous guitar players have played this guitar. Um, you never know what's going to be in this. I never know. What's going to be. But also just because of. I'm slightly conscious of the fact that I might have to sell my house to repay Bernie if I was to drop this. Um, so And your shop. And the shop, yeah. Might get a bit of change from the shop, in fairness, but uh, the house probably not. Oh, it's got a Joe Bonamassa set list in there. That, that, that sums that guitar up at the moment. Look at that. What a name dropper. I know. Look at that. How many he, have you got a case that you can get a Joe Bonamassa set list? Well, he Joe play, Bonamassa he set plays list it down. more than me. There you go, look. So this is the beast. This is um, it. 
I, I, you know, all I really know about this is is that it is a it is a, a very well traveled fifty nine, hmm. um, and it's so so. Tell me how you how you came by this and I was stalked by a <laughs> <laughs> by a guy in the seventies, uh, nice guy in a nice stalked in a nice way who said, uh, I think you should have this guitar, and uh, he wanted an exorbitant amount of money for it, and I said, well, I would probably love it. Uh, but I can't afford it, what you want for it. And he said, well, we'll work something out. And I said, well, I, we can't. I said, I, you know. Anyway, he brought it to the marquee. With wild, I was playing with Wild Turkey. Mm -hmm. And I, to this day, I, I still don't know, but he he was backstage uh, between the last number and the encore. And just as I came out, he held that up. and said, it's in tune. And he said, why don't you use it? And the most brilliant way. I mean, in those days, it was, you know, it was a good guitar. It wasn't anything. It was another mm -hmm. Les Paul. And yeah. the other guitar player thought I'd turned my amp up about five notches. And then after I said, what the hell is that? And I said, it's my new guitar. Yeah, it? it's a beast. It's a beast. <laughs> yeah, Cozy Powell called it the beast. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. And um, I just had to work out something then to get it from the guy. Mm. But I've only subsequently found out f uh, from people that, that, that he was a, uh, a Les Paul collector, but he was a Les Paul specialist in those days. Right. And sort of found guitars that he thought would be good for would, people, would good, and yeah. I was on his list because I was nobody in 1974. You know, I was playing with, uh, I'd just come out of UFO, I was yeah. barely into Wild Turkey, and uh, you know, the, the, so that was the, one of the last gigs I ever did with it. So that's how I got it, and uh, well, we, we won't go into how much it cost, but it, it was a lot of money at the time. Even even then, it was a lot. Yeah, of money, it was, was it, it was more money than I was making yeah. uh, for sure. Because I, I traded him a couple of guitars. For, I traded him. Um, uh, a 65 Strat, I think, mm -hmm. which would be worth a few quid. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, probably valued at about 150 quid. Yeah. But, uh, you know, these were... You could go into shops in London in the, that sort of early 70s where these would be hanging on the wall for anything from 350 to 500 quid. 300 if it was if it was battered, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And you're talking about a, a time where a gigging musician would be oh, earning, okay. what, 40, 50 pound a week? Maybe? Oh, no, no. Not even as much 20. as that? 20. 20 pound a week? Yeah, I was, I, when I bought this guitar, I mm. think I was getting 25 quid a week. So 100 pound a month. So you're talking yeah. three months yeah, wages. three or four so months wages. That's yeah. a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, um, especially when you already had a guitar. Yeah. And it was like, well, what am I going to do, you know? But, of course, once you'd heard it, you know, I think mm. I played it through a Marshall and, yeah. and then... Afterwards was when the, this this Eric Clapton connection came mm -hmm. because he said to me he came about three months later to another gig, and said uh, how's the guitar? I said Phew. and it was right mm -hmm. by my side and which is where it always was. And I said well, <laughs> you know, it doesn't go anywhere where I don't go kind of thing. And he said yeah, isn't it strange that Clapton would let a guitar like that go? Now bear in mind this is seventy four, maybe mm. into seventy five, and it wasn't like what? It, it was like oh really? What? He said oh well, it was one of Eric's guitars, you know. And he said, maybe it's the blues breaker guitar. And I went, yeah, maybe it is. Because we didn't really know. And I said, yeah. but, you know, so consequently. But I knew it wasn't because then I found out a lot long, long after that that the blues breaker guitar was a 60. Right. But I thought to myself, in the interim period, it won't, it won't hurt to have an association. <laughs> so I never, ever said that this was the blues breaker yeah. guitar. But I have to admit, I never said it wasn't either. <laughs> to a scream really yeah. like and then so that is that whole you know tone off thing mm -hmm. it'll do everything you know I mean, I've never played through yeah. this, this amp before, so 
But you know, I know what this will do. It's like you know. That's that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because a lot of people yeah. have that thing where Got the, to have an, um, there's a certain pedal, or so, you know. But you saying is, as long as you've got this guitar, yeah, you can pretty much plug For into me, any yeah. decent valve amp. And, yeah, I think so. And I think that's an important. Again, this is really quiet, yeah. uh, and there's yeah. no pedals. And no pedals, folks. No and, pedals. And you're getting you're getting a scream out of there. You know, if you want to scream, there's a scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guitar that you that, that so you're you're playing in Wild Turkey and the guy gives you this guitar and says you've got to use this for the mm. encore. What was the guitar you had? It was a Les Paul. Oh, just another Les Paul. Yeah, it was, a, it was a it was a gold top. Yeah. And this was just like, and you said it's like five times, well not five times. It was live, just, a, just it, was a, like, it was a, just, another level. It was another mm. level. And I'd played I played Les Pauls, you know, in the, before and always thought, yeah, well they're great, they're great, but I can't afford one. Yeah. But no, never one that had made me go, don't. It's never going to leave my hands. Yeah. And, and it, literally from that night on, it's you know. There was a rumour a couple of years back that, that this I'd sold it. I don't know who started that, but a couple of dealers probably. Not you, Lee. Not you. No, no, no. Oops. I'm trying to remember to what pay I, royalties. How do you I suppose the reason this got its, um, you know, a little bit of limelight again uh, two, three years ago was, of course, you, you um, allowed Gibson to, to sort yeah, of borrow yeah. it for a bit. Well, Joe was heavily involved with, with Gibson and I, Joe and I have become, you know, pretty close friends. And uh, he basically said to the guys at Gibson, you know, you know the, one of the best Les Pauls I've ever played in my life, you know, is, is this one. And mm -hmm. he, he said, then you're making Les Pauls that are, you know, not A, have done as much famous work as this yeah. one, but not. But at the end of the day, this is just a great guitarist. So the next thing is I get a call from them and um, they make 300, which yeah. proceed to sell out very quickly. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been, it's been yeah. the most asked for, most in demand, as you say, the, our allocation of, of, of the beast. I can't mm. remember, what was it, number 10? I think it was number 10, wasn't yeah. it? They did. Uh, I don't know how many we got, but they were all pre-sold before they arrived. Yeah. And it was just... Um, well, I think they, 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 they were the only ones that were pre that all sold before they left mm. the factory. I think they did. They nailed. I mean, they nailed the yeah, detail, they, they, they? they did. I met the guy. Uh, I went over to Nashville, and uh, I met the guy who does all the hand mm. stuff on it. And he said, that, that's the hardest thing to do is to get this. Um, can you see that? Yeah. And um, that's just the floor in the wood, apparently, um, where it's leaked over the years. I mean, if I'd have, I should have thought really. I mean, it's still red under here. Still oh cherry, wow! Still cherry. Under. That was the bit that yeah. I couldn't because I yeah. I bought um I bought a fifty eight reissue last year in this color yeah. maybe subliminally maybe subliminally I wanted a beast but whatever <laughs> um, and I didn't even didn't realize it, until then you know this this color wasn't a, a color that existed in fifty nine no. it was a no. it's a sunburst that has just faded and become this sort of dirty lemon kind of color which I think is brilliant you know. Live, hold that. Let's see if I can get this off. That's about seven thousand pounds worth it's of this sacrilege now. Look, the... no, well, no, what have I done now? This is a first. Are you ready for this? Oh my life! That's ridiculous. That's a first. That is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So who, painted, who painted that? I can't believe yeah. that. I yeah, mean, like I said. 
I, it never ceases to amaze me, you know, having spent, you know, my, virtually my entire life working in and around guitars. See something And like yet that. you still just see the odd thing and you just go, are you kidding me? I know. say goodbye to the beast much as it saddens me um <laughs> now that you fixed it yeah yeah that's even my claim to fame that is now it's like i fixed it um <laughs> having said that though of course whilst we're here uh you mentioned uh that the beast uh, was not your first gibson not my first les paul yeah oh of course yeah because this isn't even so. Yeah. Yeah. God, this doesn't weigh anything, no, does it? Nothing. No. This is was it like made of paper mache or something? Oh, no, like special, yeah. spe good mahogany. Um, so, of course, you just say not my first Les Paul, which is going to throw uh, lots of people that mm. would would see this guitar and think of it as an SG. But it's, uh, because it of course it originally wasn't. No, this is the one that, that Les himself said, "Take my name off those things." Yes, yeah. yes, funny. Uh, but here it is. Here it is. But, but uh, so for what? This was for what? Two or three years. This was the Les Paul, wasn't it? Yeah, from um, 61 to 63, 60 yeah. to 63, something like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, it needs a bit of a tune up. Yeah, probably. Um, so. <sighs> that's all original. That's the guitar that uh, I got. So this used to have a little. That um, had a B5, is it? What, originally or something you've put on it? You no, mean? That originally. Took that off fairly soon after I got it because yeah. it just wouldn't stay in tune. Yeah. And uh, I think I, I think I got that um, stop piece from Top Gear in Denmark Street. That's when you could go into Denmark Street. This is, see, this is the difference uh, between those days and these. You go into, say, I need a tailpiece for a SG or whatever, Les Paul or whatever. And they say, do you want a new one or do you want a used one? And they say, how much are the new ones? They say they're, they're seven pound fifty or seven. And how much are the old ones? Oh, four quid. So I'll have an old one then, because it saved you a few quid. Yeah, that's how it was. It was this like seems crazy now, doesn't it? Yeah. This is the guitar that um, Gary Moore borrowed from me when he broke when he broke the the famous Les Paul, the, the Peter Green one. When he, he got, broke it. It got broken and uh, it was in the back of a car and a taxi hit the car and uh, just cleaned the head straight off. So he, 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 we, you know, we were pretty, pretty good mates, and didn't know each other a long time. And he just said, uh, "Are you using your SG?" And I said, "No, I, I probably had three or four guitars by then." And he said, "Could I borrow it for a couple of months?" And I said, "Yeah, of course you could." So he came and got it, came down to my flat in Paddington to get it, and I never saw it for two years. <laughs> John, John May is always <laughs> on the phone to me, going, "Can I borrow my guitars?" I said, Leave it, John. <laughs> Stop phoning me. Buy your this, own guitars. So this was uh, Let's have a reminisce. See what that sounds like. This is, you know. It's loud. Oh, it is, isn't it? You like pokey guitars, don't you? So this is woman tone, and it's uh... same with. Do you want that strap back? Oh, there it is. You said you yeah, haven't played this for a while. I'm, I'm, I don't think I've played this in, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> Might leave it out. You'll have, you have Joe Bonamassa on the phone going, I'll borrow that one I'll as well. I'll take that one, yeah. <laughs> well. It's a shame in a way because, you know, I've got, you know, what's your t-shirt say? I have too many guitars, yeah. 
Yes, said no one ever. Um, I think if there's one direction that the guitar market has moved in, which I find a bit saddening somehow, is that you've got some phenomenal old guitar instruments mm. and also some phenomenal new guitar instruments, you know, made mm. by some fabulous luthiers that, that you know, puts out, yeah. you know, hundreds of hours worth of effort into it. But then people buy it and go, oh, I'm a bit frightened to touch this, you know, I'll just, yeah. I'll leave it under the bed or something. He's no, going, I, mean, I mean, like, you know, we've taken it, you know, taking stuff. I mean, it is what it is. I'm, I'm quite aware of its, its worth. Yeah. And, but, you know, I get a, just as much pleasure out of somebody like yourself seeing it and yeah. playing it. Yeah. Because how many times, it's like, I'm a bit sometimes, uh, you know, with forums and stuff, there's a lot of talk on forums about yeah. this guitar as well. But generally, Les Pauls. But the question I want to ask some of these guys on the phone is, say, when did you ever play a 59 or a 58 mm. Les well, Paul? You know, because yeah. they seem to know more about Les Pauls than people have actually got them sometimes. It's, uh, it is I'm a wonderful... I'm not cynical, though, am I? No, but you're, you're right. And it's a wonderful <laughs> truth about the, uh, you know, because, you know, if I if I go on the internet and I tell you that, you know, I'm, a, I'm an expert on dumbbell amplifiers and I've mm. seen inside them and this mm. is what, you know, then... Then I am. A, I must be an expert, mustn't yeah, I? But I, it, I may have never, you know, I may have never seen one in my life. I mean, I've played. Um, a, I've played a lot of Les Pauls. Yeah. And, you know, this one is definitely special. Yeah. You know, but another one I had. It was a sixty. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't very good. It just wasn't very good. Yeah. And I sold that one because it wasn't very good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't usable. Now yeah. it would be like it was in nice condition, mm. but it just didn't sound great. You know, yeah. and there was nothing wrong with it. There was it was done. Everything was good. Yeah. About it. it just didn't feel right, and I couldn't do what I do with the, yeah. with this. I, I don't. I don't think there was any um, magic about the fifties and the sixties with Fender. I, I think with Fender or Gibson. I think you know there there were Friday afternoon guitars during that yeah. period, and there were you know and there were absolutely brilliant. Guitars I'm continually that amazed to this day that I can understand. Um, the, you know the valuation of stuff and guitars and stuff and you know and I do yeah. wheel and deal still with different people you know my guys and especially in America but I can still not make out the price of fenders mm -hmm. because even in the 50s and 60s obviously they were making hundreds of guitars a week or a mm -hmm. month you know bolt on next you know it's great. at least with the Garch top Gibsons you know you've got one guy doing the body one guy yeah. doing the binding one guy they they are pieces of, of arts and yeah. crafts really whereas yeah. I mean, love them to bits, you know, Telecasters and Strats, but they're just knocked together, you know. Fent Leo wanted to make a cheap guitar, yeah, and he pretty much did. But, yeah. but of course, you know, they fetch big money. You know? Yeah, well, I, I, you it's know? it's their his. I think it's it's a great history. It's no, a not, historical not significance, it was, isn't yeah. it? I, I, and I don't have a. I don't mind if somebody says, "Look, I've just paid a hundred thousand mm. dollars for this guitar." Because of its historical significance, and because I know it's yeah. going to be worth one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. in ten years' time, or I think it is. But it's the ones that go. Yeah. I. But it's and it's. I paid a hundred thousand because it's like fifty times better than a yeah. new. And I you go, so. is it really? Yeah. You know, it's like. Anyway. I, I mean, I, I can understand sometimes with a with a guitar with, with notated history, you know, mm. stuff. You know, I mean, I wrote here. I go again with 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 this. You know, so there's something tangible, something. You know, and I could that probably that covered out. the cost of the it guitar, didn't it? You know, it, once it, or that, twice. That's paid itself back a couple <laughs> of times. Yeah. And, you know, and the other ones, and it, it's pretty much if you find a, a picture of White Snake from day one to, to, to when I I finished with it, Yeah. that's the guitar that I'll be holding. So, you know, that's all documented. It's there forever. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and at some point, I probably, you know, it'll go. You know, uh, you know, somebody will buy it and, you know, it'll go. I just hope it goes to somebody who plays it really yeah. you know uh, i guess that's the nice thing about joe yeah. isn't it yeah you that's know, why i like he, that's why I, and i always say that it's safer with joe and his tech mike hickey yeah, yeah. than it is with me you know i think what we'll do now is kind of leap forward uh a few years to a, to a, a newer relationship that you form with the guitar brand yes um so let me have your wonderful sg your les paul sg and see you in 20 years yeah tell me about uh tell me about how you first met paul uh, i met paul in um uh, uh frankfurt at, at a trade show uh i don't forget why i was there but uh, i was there and i went to see him in a club uh somebody said oh there's a 
there's a after gig party thing in where they they were playing and Paul was playing, and uh, I, I knew Paul by uh, association with a couple of other guys and and who had passed on his best wishes to me. You know, it was like a guitar thing, guitarist yeah. thing, yeah. and uh, th th we'd never met really. But then we met, and which uh, is about ten years ago, maybe. Yeah, or? getting on for ten years, mm. it must be now. And uh, we went to this club in Frankfurt. Well, I went in there. They were playing. And Paul was playing. And uh, they invited me up to play. And I used his right PRS, uh, his, his, his personal. The crowd loved it. And I said, how cool is this? I'm playing Paul Reed Smith. Paul, Paul Reed, Reed Smith. Smith. Yeah. It, was, it really was a big thing to me. And he was sitting in the audience listening. And he must have liked something he heard anyway. And he said to me afterwards, he said, he said Brian, why don't you use PRS guitars? And I said, because I don't have any. And he just Good took, response. And he yeah. went like this. He put the guitar over my neck. He said, you do now. He said, that such was a, it. That's such a Paul thing. Yeah. I can just and, see him And doing. I realised it now. And he promised me that guitar because, you know, he replaces his own guitar on a, on a you know, yeah. yearly basis or something. And because it was such a good guitar, and I said, "Can I have that when you're through with it?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, it's yours." And Al Dumiola stole it. <laughs> <laughs> it was an eagle, basically. Okay. But it was, a, it was, you know, his life had trunk yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. doing his guitars, tweaking them and stuff. And uh, that was that was it, really. The next thing I know, that I, I've, I've I've got a blue modern eagle, yeah. and, which was lovely. I play, I still play a lot, and my relationship with him developed really quickly. I went over to. Over to America, we had some kind of uh, nice private time, which mm -hmm. was good. You know, drove back to his house a couple of times. He has a lovely family, and he has a great house. But it's not, you know, it's friendly. He has a studio there and stuff. And you know, Paul's a boffin, really. He he he's a great guitar player, but he loves sounds. His his big passion is microphones. Okay, you know, believe it or not, and uh, you 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 find an old microphone or a, an old Stratocaster, and I know which one he'll go for. Oh, you know, wow. the microphone. And um, we just get along really well until the point where we came along to uh, develop uh, this little, little gem. And we decided that he said we want to do a, you know, as they lovingly call them now, they call them Bernies. We want to do yep, a Bernie. We want to do a Bernie. So. I said okay, and and he, and he said, well, we know what it's going to basically be yes. because that's what you're associated with. Yes, it was never going to be you a bolt. It was, it was never going to uh, be a double cutaway. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was never going to have three pickups. <laughs> and uh, so we came up with this. We, uh, I mean, the factory guys. You know, they. I play the guitar. They design guitars. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not precious enough, but I did want a few things. Yeah. And uh, this, the, the layout of this was was, yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Because during the seventies. I played a Gibson Explorer mm -hmm. uh, when they were fairly rare and hard to find. Yeah. And I just like the idea of two volumes and one tone, one tone because, yeah. you know, all I ever do really with the tone is turn it off, really. And whoever uses the other one, really, yeah. you don't, the treble one didn't even matter. So I thought that would do that. So that was a, you know, that was and a thing nicely, I liked. So there's a little bit more out the way, aren't they? A little bit more out the way, of... yeah. And the wraparound, we did try it with another bridge. But we know what you mean. You know what I mean. And this this just works really well. Uh, I think I was he he said we'll put birds on it, yeah. which was unusual I think at the time for us yeah. SEs. I think they were dots. Yeah. So he said we'll have the birds and a bound neck. But what was and the that was that what was the drive to, to to do an SE model rather than a full USA no that was line? me was that, that, that was that, you that was, was it? me I, I wanted a guitar that was um, affordable mm -hmm. because I do. A, a lot of the clinic stuff and and when i do gigs i i'm always out front talking to mm -hmm. the people who come and stuff and you know i talk too much probably but the last thing you want is a guy to say bernie i'd really love one of your guitars but i can't afford it you know yes. you start off with a negative yeah so we i said what about having a, a korean yeah having an se yeah and he went oh uh, but yeah okay if you yeah. that's what you want and i think it's proved right because it's been very popular yeah um people i get to this day, uh, uh, I get uh, texts, emails every day from somewhere in the world yeah. saying, I've just bought your guitar, you know, how come it ain't a thousand dollars more or something? That, that was the story, wasn't it? Was that, yeah. that I think PRS assumed on day one that, that outside of the UK, there might not be a lot of interest yeah. in this. So this was originally sold into us as, yeah. a, as a limited edition UK, uh, UK only thing. Yeah, yeah. And, a little bit of Europe. Uh, yeah, yeah and I, but I think every single country in the world... Canada went, bought... The Canadians bought the first batch right. before any had been allocated yeah. to... Uh, 
And so not not UK. only not only did it sell into every yeah. single country in, in the world, it also yeah. so, so and of course then couldn't be limited edition. You know, it had no. to just be a, it's, a regular think, line now. Might, and that's what five I years. I think ago? I'm right. It's five years. I think yeah. it'll be five years in the spring. Uh, maybe it's four and a half. Um, no, spring now, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, Actually, it's I supposed to be summer now, but it's you wouldn't the know best it, would you? selling SE in their catalogue. I wow. believe. Yeah, I think it's because everybody's got their car losses now. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a. I mean, it's a great guitar, and I think it's what's quite nice about this is it's one of those guitars that um, it's not like the Steve Vai guitar where you can't mm. get away from the fact that it's obviously yeah. a Steve Vai signature guitar. You know, this to mo you know to most people they will go, "Well, that's a really pretty looking flame top single cup." Single cup. You know, what, what's the you know? There's no. I don't well, think there's anything garish I mean, about it. I mean, you know, you'd have to be coy or candid about it. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the input of this guitar com this comes from the beast. Mm. You know, it, I mm. wanted the neck is the same profile. Yeah, and you know you're getting um, uh, my thoughts, my input yeah. into a guitar that's going to cost you five six hundred quid yeah. or whatever. Shop around, and uh, Anderton's may give you a very good deal. <laughs> yeah. No, don't and, shop around. <laughs> shop, don't shop around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because he'll do the best deal anyway. Yeah. So. Um, and we, you know, these are all, and I do use these on stage. Yeah, I know. Um, I do use them, and I haven't changed anything. They did change. I've got a couple of guitars where they they said to me when I was at the factory, uh, "Give me your guitar for half yeah. an hour," and they bunged on fifty seven oh eights. Yeah. And then because that was popular, they did a limited edition yeah. of about one hundred and fifty, yeah. which sold out straight away. Yeah. So it's been good. So now we're waiting for the American version, yeah. which will be probably the end of this year. So well, I you know I love this guitar and I respect massively any artist that that puts their name to a to an affordable guitar mm. and then actually plays it um, yeah. so let's 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 give this some let's put this in the limelight so we haven't changed any settings on the amplifier so if you want to rewind quickly back to the the beast bit <laughs> and then re fast forward quickly back to this you can get a direct <laughs> AB comparison but. <laughs> And I, I know from experience, I've played tons of these. I really like the feel of them. Yeah. And of course, um, these are the stock uh, SE yep. humbuckers. This is as it comes but out of the factory. If yeah. you wanted 5708s or a pair of, I don't know, some if you put a Seymour Duncan if you put, 59s yeah, or I mean, whatever. People do, I think, uh, obviously with cost controls and stuff. Yeah. You know, these, I like these because they, they break up really good. And then, yeah. you know, we're playing fairly quietly here. Yeah. I mean, with a big amp. They, they to me they they, mm. they sing the song you know but if you want to put 5708s on you, you know, still get even even with a pair of 5708s and, and that it'll guitar, be a bit it'd punchier, still be just and it, it would still be probably sub 700 pounds even all yeah. in so you just sit there going it's yeah. still phenomenal yeah. guitar yeah i mean there's you know 57 I mean, other pickups are available i'm sure yeah well, i mean and actually <laughs> funnily enough that i think if if the quite often on on uh korean guitars and i'm just thinking you know whether it's uh Epiphone or PRS or whoever are making the guitars out there. Yeah. It puts such a disproportionate amount of cost on top of the guitar yeah. just to say, oh look, can you ship in a couple of American pickups? I, I don't... They tend not to, but to do it as an aftermarket thing, yeah. I think makes a lot of sense for I the... I think these are the same pickups that go on the Carlos yeah. as well. So I, I the same the... thing applies, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. uh, how they do it with the, the join and everything, I, I just I find is... And every top is different, and there's some really... This is a 
fairly dark cherry, but there's yeah. some really nice tobacco ones. Have you seen those? Yeah, and there's a pretty spalted yeah. one, and, 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 a, and a gold color, top. Color one. Yeah, I've never seen a gold top yet. Well, I do believe that uh, PRS are going to let me see one. <laughs> We talked, we talked again about the fact that you've started off with an SE and actually that's all you originally really wanted. Mm. And of course it's been so popular, mm. such is the demand now that there are a small number of people that would quite like an American one. I so think there's you, quite a large number of people that would want to yeah, one. So you a, did a, yeah, so you did a... So this is the... This was the first kind of... Um, I was going to say stab, but that sort of probably undersells it a bit. Well, this one is... Um, just trade this one over. This is a bit of a curio. This, this is um. Oh, I don't need that. This is a prototype uh, McCarty uh, single cut, and this is uh, this is a private stock uh, guitar. But, but Warren Haynes has number one of these, and I'm lucky enough to have number two, which is all right in my book because Warren's business. Um, but this is a full-on American. Um, this is fairly new off the block. I would envisage that when the American Bernies are done, yeah. it'd be pretty close to this. So you, you think the American Bernie is going to be kind of like a sort of a hybrid of these two? I think it will. Do you think yeah. they'll stick with the wrap around? Uh, or are you I think we'll go with the well, we might go style? with we might go with this. We might stick to the wrap. That, that hasn't been decided. What it does, what we do think we would have is we'll probably go to a standard layout here, mm -hmm. and we're going to add a push pull. Out of phase thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, a, they said that with this one. So yeah, it's a bit of a watch this space. They might have. Yeah, yeah they, if they yeah. start turning a few around. I mean, if, if if everybody, if every other person who's got one of these, would like a full-on American version. Yeah. Then they're going to do okay. Yeah. No. I agree. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Uh, be beautiful, beautiful guitar. I mean, pulls really. You know, the guys there have really pulled out the stops with this. It's a, just a fantastic. He's, he's got that thing, you know, Paul's big thing has always been, you know, why do 50s guitars sound so good kind mm. of thing. And, you know, that's his kind of criteria to a certain I, extent. I have a lot yeah. of time for people. Yeah. I think so many products are built these days to a price point where yeah. it's, um, you know, where, where can you source one of these for 10 pence cheaper than the one yeah. that we're currently using? Yeah, he'll, he'll uh, the he's way. the other way, isn't yeah. he? He's kind of like, I'm going to yeah. get like that's 100 a different versions of these yeah. to find the best sounding one. And then whatever it costs, yeah. that's the one that that's I'm going to use. That's the kind use. of thing that when you take them back to the factory, he'll say, give me your guitar for half an hour. Mm. And they'll have come up with a better version of these or, some, or something. Yeah, I... And he'll, he'll say, he'll come and he'll get it back and he'll say, it sounds great, don't touch it. What I will say with this is this wasn't made for me, this guitar. Right. Uh, it's a prototype. He signed it on the back of the head. Uh, but I feel I've had this guitar 20 years. Right. It's got total vintage. And that's with, um, um, you know, a nice shiny neck yeah. on the back. Whereas, of course, the beast is battered. And, yeah. and I like a kind of a woody neck, to be honest yeah. with you. But this one feels just, and the, the, this isn't contoured for me. But I've got a feeling some of it was. You know? <laughs> I think there's a few of a few hints in here. So they pull so they're so good they don't even put their name on the head. So. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice yeah, that on the little, private stock one. The little yeah. logo in there, yeah. This 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 is a whisper to a scream as well. Yeah.
that's a fantastic little yeah. riff that one, isn't it? For that sort of that good sort guitar. Of tone. Good guitar. Yeah, cool. So we're going. For, we've gone really full circle now. I must admit, I've had a fantastic afternoon. Uh, you know, this is. Um, some days I just think, can't believe how lucky I am to come and do this sort of job. <laughs> um, so, you know, really, really massive thanks to, to Bernie for letting you're, us into his house. You're very welcome. And you're thanks to welcome. thanks to your lovely wife for keeping us in tea and cakes. And thanks thanks to Mick. Yes, thanks to Mick You can't see camera. him, folks, but uh, um, he's beautiful. But, uh, yeah, I, I just think, it, you know, if any of you guys are sitting there going, I'd like to find out a bit more about Bernie, uh, you've got your own website, haven't you, Ben? Yeah, Marsden, go to, uh, go to UK. I'm, I'm online, I'm on uh, Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and... Uh, and my new album, yes, which I must get a plug in for, is uh, still available in all good record shops uh, and downloads. It's called Shine. Joe Bonamassa is on it, and uh, David Coverdale is on it. It's uh, doing very well. It was number one on iTunes on the blues chart, so uh, somebody likes it. <laughs> and I'll be doing a new one very soon. So, you know. Oh, well, that's awesome! And if you get the opportunity to, you're still doing a few clinics for PRS, aren't yep. you? Round and about the place. If you get the opportunity to do that, one of the things. Uh, which I've uh, pinched off of Bernie the last time I saw him, uh, is this brilliantly recorded um, jam track CD. So it's got seven seven tracks on it, done with a proper band mm. uh, of uh, of anything from sort of blues tunes through to almost kind of like Carlos Santana yeah. kind of stuff on there. Um, and but the guitar parts have kind of been left out for you to just sort of jam over yourself. So that's a good. One. But you can only buy this if you go to a Bernie Marsden. I pretty much do these at. Which we must arrange. Clinic. So I'll, I'll be down to the. I shall talk to PRS the, the on my PR, way home. The PRS and Anderton. Yes, Empire we'll do one. Must get together. We'll do one. Um, well, look, you know, as I said, uh, you know, it's fulfilled one of my little childhood ambitions is to, to sort of finally have a and proper you've repaired look at the, beast. the beast. Yes, yeah. um, and you know, pleasure talking to you. So Cheers, thank man. you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Speak You're to you welcome. Soon. Cheers, mate.